you don't do a radio show anymore here. You don't do the uh, Lost Lennon tapes anymore. No. Um, what What do you do? What do you? What, <laughs> who is Elliot Mintz in in two thousand and fourteen? Somebody asked me that the other day. A wonderful, wonderful interviewer named Paul Leslie. Of, he asked, "Who is Elliot Mintz?" I'm still working on that. You know, I haven't figured that out. And by the way, don't spend a lot of time doing it. Um, I'm not one of those people who uh, chooses to go to psychotherapists and the others to try to discern who it is that I am. Um, as for what I do, well, you know, now that I'm in the uh, third act of this play that I'm in, I like to go horseback riding. Always, yes. You always like that. I like to walk. I like to meditate. I like to read. I like to drink great wine 60 feet away from any radio station that might be in my neighborhood. I like to hang out with friends who I can trust and love. Occasionally I'll go to a lecture. Sometimes traveling to a place I've never been to that uh, intrigues me. I'm thinking about going back to school and taking classes and subjects that um, I never really finished school. I'd like to study classical literature. I'd like to learn a second language. Last night, I took my first yoga class, which was, I'm still recovering from it today. I'm doing all the important stuff now that I didn't have time for, for I didn't have time to do it during those years as you were going down that litany of me running with the A-list or doing the 2,000 radio interviews or living my life on the fast track, I've slowed it down. So I wish there was a headline. I wish there was something in 3D. And, um, at the risk of a shameless plug, I spent some time creating this uh, website as a repository uh, for some of the experiences of the past uh, with a great designer, TK. And the rest of the time, you know, I just try and laugh. I try and chill. Try and enjoy my life. I try to be socially responsible. I try to involve myself with philanthropic causes, give where I can to the best of my ability, and just try and be a good dude. That's exciting because at, at uh, an advanced age, and I should I should say I'm disappointed because I thought you're going to bring you back here and you bring the young people back <laughs> on this station, <laughs> and I didn't think you know, oh well you're not young anymore so I guess that's not that plan isn't going to work. Nobody is, Roy. We we all got here at exactly the same time. Aha. Uh -huh. All of those of us who were listening to broadcasts that we did in the early 1960s, the so-called Woodstock generation, the post-World War II baby boomers, the people born between 40, 45, we are all looking at knocking on 70s door now, and in certain cases beyond that. So any talk about uh, the young people... Well, you know, from time to time, I, 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 I might chill with some friends of Miley Cyrus's, but that's, that's kind of a, a rare evening. There isn't a lot of that going on. Um, I don't spend much time with the Beeb. And we, the, the consolation is we all grew old together. We're all still part of the fraternity. What's changed, essentially, uh, is physicality, health, clarity of mind and spirit, uh, the way we might appear. but for, And sadly, uh, we've lost a lot of, uh, of folks that we grew up with. But uh, the spirit, the fundamental joy, the things that we delight in, our dreams, our visions, that shining light beyond the horizon, well... In my world, that burns with the same degree of clarity as it did when I first walked through this front door close to 50 years ago. 
So you're not uh, doing the usual old age is just slow down and do nothing and re relax and rest and complain and get sick? And, well, I knock wood. Sadly, there is none in the building. Everything's been replaced now with uh, Formica <laughs> and these little signs that say, do not touch the furniture. Uh, but if I could knock wood conceptually, my health is uh, surprisingly good. Um, yes, I have slowed down. I'm not ashamed of that. I think that the slowing down is part of the growth process. Slow down, you move too fast. Got to make tomorrow last, right? Um, I don't complain. I rejoice. I spend less time underscoring that which appears to be missing and celebrating that which is here, now. I'm a very, very fortunate guy. As are you, Roy. You're doing with your life exactly what you want to do. And in the process, taking so many people along for the ride, what do you and I got to complain about? You mentioned your website, and I am very, it's, it's I would say, the most imaginative website that I have seen. The oh, engineering, uh, the animation, whatever, is, is just, it's brilliant. And it's also easy to uh, maneuver. So uh, the the website, by the way, is it's a free website. And Elliot even says at the beginning there's no cups and no T-shirts. So if you want a cup or T-shirt, it's the wrong place to go. <clears throat> it's all free, and it's filled with uh, amazing material. It's ElliotMintz.com, uh, two L's. And one T, ElliotMintz.com, and there's a uh, formidable-looking agreement at the beginning, but that's pretty much to to tell people that please don't rip anything off from here and try to sell it. Yeah. And uh, but so that's pretty much what it is. And then there's this huge. You've done about two thousand interviews. Yes. And. Um, you have about 150 of those on the website. Correct. All free. It's all free. And his, um, I wrote down some names. Some some of the people that Elliot interviewed that are, uh, the interviews are on the website. Uh, Jack Nicholson, Allen Ginsberg, Salvador Dali, Dennis Hopper, Jane Mansfield, Tim Leary, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, Yoko, John Wayne. Norman Mailer, Stevie Wonder, Raquel Welch, Chris Christopherson, David Cassidy, Groucho Marx, Steve Allen, Alice Cooper, Melton Burrell, Grace Slick, Laura Huxley, Dick Cavett, um, the Beach Boys, uh, Jack Harris, of course, Ra several Ram Dass and Ringo, Johnny Mathis, Mort Saul, Donovan, um, Theodore Sturgeon, Ricky Nelson, Rob Reiner, Oscar Brown. There's a lot of material on um, Sean, Sean Ono Lennon, uh, John and Yoko's uh, boy, and Karen Black, for uh, mm -hmm. which is I found very interesting. We have a lot of it, and then there's a lot of material of uh, Marianne Wilkinson. There's uh, discussions on UFOs and Scientology and Salminio, sexual freedom and. And uh, writing your own book, publishing your own book, a whole seg section on publishing your own book. And it's all free, and none of it is a uh, uh, come on for anything at all. Elliot is is truly a forthright uh, person, one of the very few that you might meet in your life. And that's ElliotMintz.com, and uh, just buzz over the agreement. And uh, again, it's to to just prevent anybody who wants to snip off a person, a thing, and then try to sell it uh, somewhere, because that's what a lot of people do. One of the concepts that and I it's brilliantly engineered. It's it's a jukebox. It's great. The jukebox, which was designed by uh, TK, uh, you know, we could have simply you can go online now, Roy, and for a hundred and fifty bucks. You can buy a template. You put the template up, and you fill in your name and menu items and categories for hardware stores or an actor or an actress showing their portfolio, their clip reel, etc. That would have been the easy way to go. 
When I decided to do this, for a myriad of reasons, hopefully we'll get into some of them tonight, um, the idea of the jukebox, which was a, it's a co-idea between myself and uh, the designer, for me, the jukebox was my iPod. When I was coming of age, I would listen to the radio and the disc jockey would decide what I would listen to. Media was a one-way experience. There was no such thing as uh, uh, video on demand. You didn't demand anything. They demanded that you pay attention, buy Viceroy cigarettes, and uh, listen to the next song that they picked. Somewhere when I was 13 or 14 years old, give or take, I went to the local pizza place in my old neighborhood in Washington Heights. 187th Street near Fort Washington Avenue, you know, uptown. That's in New, New York. Yeah, it's New York. It's where I was born and raised. So we go to Pete's place after school. That's the real Elliot Mintz you're hearing right now. What's left of him. <laughs> and uh, I walked in one day and I saw this, uh, this thing, this object that for me um, resembled the monolith in 2001 Space Odyssey. It was just this thing that glowed. It had bubbles, it moved, it vibrated, and people would walk up to it, place a dime in it, make an individual selection, push a button, and fill the pizza place with a sound that meant something to them. It was the first place where I heard black people singing. I thought Blueberry Hill was created and sung by Pat Boone. That's how I heard it on the radio. When I grew up, black people were not allowed to be played on the radio. It was considered, quote, race music. So Race it, music, yeah. Race music. You don't play black people singing. That's why all those early rock and roll songs were covered by white artists. When I first walked into the pizza place and walked up to the jukebox, dropped some dimes, listened to what my friends had picked, I heard music for the first time. I think I heard Elvis at the pizza place before I saw him on the Ed Sullivan Show. Something else happened with the jukebox. People in the room started dancing and singing with each other. Later, there was a thing created called Transistor Radio, which was a tiny jukebox that you put in your breast pocket with earphones and suddenly you were allowed to move around. You didn't have to be at home to listen to a radio. You could now take the music with you. So I thought to myself, hmm, a jukebox, interaction, the idea of mobility, no wires attached to where you were going to do your dance. This seemed like an intriguing mixture. If I could marry that to the contemporary technology and preserving a little bit of the glow and sense of it, the jukebox seemed right. For those of you who are listening to this for the very first time, never heard of me, perhaps never heard of some of these names that we're talking about, um, if you visit the website... Go to Radio Interviews, click on Alan Watts, and take 15 minutes or 20 minutes of your time to just roll with the experience. Well, this is the second spin, folks. These were interviews, many of which I did in this building close to 50 years ago. And um, second time around, they make even more sense to me than ever. And uh, I wish you well with them. Okay, well, let's take a short break and uh, have a... Um, the, the Emmy Awards were on uh, last night. Yeah, I didn't watch so, that. Well, I'm relieved because I thought, uh-oh, I have to watch the Emmy Awards because Elliot's on and I have to know about what was in the... And then you said you weren't probably going to... All that no, the, the only time uh, that I go to award shows, the Academy Awards, MTV, Grammys, that kind of stuff, 
is when I have a client who's been nominated or a client who is making an introduction of some kind. And um, I used to attend all of them, of course. But now in my semi-retired years, uh, there's no reason for me to schlep the red carpet and get the person the attention or even pay much attention to those uh, recipients. Although a collective congratulations to all of those who are bringing home the statue tonight and asking their agent to up their price tomorrow. Which, if the truth be told, is what it's all about. And this is for uh, dedicated to all the Emmy Award winners and losers. <laughs> 